Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mindful Crafting. Um, this is kind of a weird, uh, unusual <laughs> setup in that I am pre-recording. So um, I have to leave town for a family emergency tomorrow. So um, I still wanted to have you guys craft along with me. Um, so we are making paper mache bases for sculptures or whatever you want to call them. So um, all right, well, I'm going to start by unpacking the kit that you guys all got, hopefully. Um, so, let's see. Looks like this little kit. Um, all right. So, in your kit, you're going to have about two newspapers um, or like one super huge newspaper. So, good amount of newspaper. You're going to have little paper mache, uh, what did I call it? Powder, um, it's flour and salt. Um, so this is really easy to make at home. Um, if you have a gluten allergy or sensitivity, um, I will put, uh, I'll put this in the email and I'll put it in the video comments that, um, you know, use your best judgment, but I might avoid using flour. Um, and there are some other products for paper mache that are not gluten-y. So anyway, I'll link to those. Um, okay, so you have that. And then you'll have a kind of uh, cardboard selection here. So this is a like big roll. Um, and then you'll have three kind of standard like uh, toilet paper size rolls. So um, yeah, okay. So that's what we're working with. Um, before I start assembling everything, um, I'm gonna show you kind of what the final product could look like. Um, so this, this is my prototype. I ended up painting it, obviously. It doesn't just end up this color. Um, and I have some dried flowers in here. Um, so this one is, wow. This one is a big roll and a little roll kind of off, you can see that, off to the side. So I just taped the little roll to the side of the big one um, and then I just kind of shaped my paper mache around that. So that's how you have this kind of off center, I didn't bother to paint the inside, but off center guy here. So um, I painted it white first, so that's the, the bottom. Um, but yeah, I kind of like the, I like the off center. Um, it also is a little bit easier when you're constructing that way you're not trying to balance something like right in the middle. Um, so that's an option. Um, you can stick with the, like you could do two, you could do three. Um, you also don't have to use all of them or more than one. So you could make kind of a big like cup shape thing. Um, it's totally up to you. you, just play around. So I think what I'm gonna do for mine today is I'm just gonna go big. I'm gonna do all three. So they don't stay perfectly round while they're in here. Um, they don't quite fit, but. I'm gonna use scissors and just kind of cut one of these down so that I'm getting three different heights. Let's show you that there. there we go. So yeah, so I have three heights. Um, I'm gonna leave them all open um, as I start to construct so I can have a base that has three, three openings. I don't know, that's around. Um, importantly, these vases are for dried flowers or greenery or pens, whatever you want to put in them, but you can't put water in them. Um, they will fall apart. Uh, you could put something like, um, like a little plastic bottle. You could leave the bottom open, um, and just sort of put it over a bottle. Um, you're still getting water near paper mache, uh, which is paper. <laughs> so 
I just wouldn't do it. I think it's more hassle than it's worth. Um, so yeah, important note, do not pour water in these. Uh, okay, so I'm going to tilt down a bit so you guys can see what I'm doing with my hands. So bring this down. All right, there we go. So to start, I have laid out some of my newspaper and I've taped it down with some masking tape. You don't have to do that at all, but um, I like it because it just gives me like a steady area to work with and I'm not getting my table covered in flour goop. So um, I would recommend that. Okay, so I've got a big bowl and I've got a fork and then I'm going to make my paste. So I'm going to dump all of this. This is half a cup of flour and one teaspoon of salt. Um, it just makes a manageable amount for one session without making a ton. This doesn't store super well. It starts to get more like pancake batter-y. Um, I used it the second day to add more substance to this guy. And I noticed that it sort of wanted to pill up and make a little like dough goop on there. Um, so yeah, I would just mix the amount that you'll need each time you're messing with it. Okay, so I'm gonna add, I've measured out a cup of water. Um, this is just like room temperature. So I dump that in there. And then I like to mix with a fork. Uh, I feel like it just, rather than a spoon, like a fork just kind of whisks it together better. So, all right, mix this up. You can kind of feel the uh, salt grains in there. So you're trying to get that dissolved. Um, the salt isn't required, but it does help. Um, it helps it dry a little bit faster. So, um, I haven't had too big of an issue with paper mache molding, um, but you just want to be really mindful of your moisture content uh, and make sure it can dry thoroughly before sticky stuff starts growing in there. So, um, okay. All right, so I've gotten pretty much all of my lumps out and it's just kind of a thick, I don't even know how to describe, maybe like crepe batter, maybe even thinner than that. Um, we really don't need thick paste. We just want enough that we're getting the paper to stick, but we're not, we're not using the paste to build up our surface. We're using the paper for that. So we're just using the paste to like make it adhere, so, okay. So got that in there. I like using a wide bowl with kind of a heavy base um, so that when I'm pulling the strips of paper through it, I'm not uh, knocking the bowl over. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take my first newspaper. Um, not gonna cut both up. I don't think we'll need that much. So. What I like to do is just start with the like cut edge of the paper. Um, and I'm gonna cut eh, like half inch strips across and like does not need to be perfect. You can cut your strips wider, um, which will help you cover your object faster, but it also makes it hard to sort of round corners or like we're doing here, like as you're kind of coming up and over. Um, if it's a super wide strip, it just doesn't wanna like make that transition super well. So even if it takes a little longer, I like to do thinner strips.
probably don't even need the entire paper, but um, when you have kind of <laughs> like messy dough hands, it's not that fun to have to stop and cut up more. So I'm gonna do it all just in case. Okay, so one thing to note is that because of the way I've cut the newspaper up, um, a lot of these strips um, are pieces of obviously very large newsprint that's been folded. So when I unfold them, they're really long. Um, and that is a pain. So what you can do is you can lay them out and cut them if you want to be like super well set up. Um, but paper is very easy to tear. So if you are just grabbing a new strip and you find it's kind of too long, you can just rip it. Um, so. All right, so I've got these set up. I'm just gonna do my like bank of paper over there so I can easily grab from it, but it's not right in my way. Um, all right, so got my little form and I am going to start in on my first strip of paper. So what I like to do is dip, do this. so I dip the, the like top of the strip and then pull it out and kind of run my hand down. So the strip is coated, but it's not carrying a ton of extra material. Um, and then I'm just gonna do the easiest thing and just go around. So, um, I'm gonna build up along here. So everything's like nice and sticky. And then I'm gonna start going up and over. Um, you can do this however you like. Uh, yeah, I don't really have a reason for that. It's just appealing to me today. I like paper mache because it forces me to slow down a little bit and I can't just instantly get the result that I want. And then things like this happen where the paper kind of folds and I force myself to deal with it. So it's good for working on your perfectionist instincts because um, you're making something very silly. <laughs> it's just simple and you're using toilet paper rolls. So it's just like, you can't take it too seriously. All right. Okay, so I haven't totally covered the side, but I've gotten some coverage. It's a little tacky. So yeah, I think I'm gonna start seeing how I want to kind of bridge this. So I'm going to go for it. Um, I am covering up, you know, a good portion of that um, opening, but I don't hate it. So having a little issue with sticking. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of our liquid here and fold this down in there. So we've got a little tab kind of helping it adhere. Um, that is one of the things I noticed kind of my first go around uh, with this one is that it's a lot easier when you're trying to build up this coverage if you're allowing enough paper to, and I didn't really allow enough here, but to kind of hold in and grab and then make its way around. Um, it's just going to make it a little bit stronger. Okay, just going next to this one. Oh, see my paper tore. That's fine. We will fill it up later.
So I'm changing my angle to kind of go diagonal down. Um, that's just sort of the way the paper wanted to fall and it's helping me kind of around that corner a little bit. Doing the same thing here, going diagonal and around. I'm not worrying too much about see what the angle should be. Um, this is like straight across here, and it's not giving the most uh, curve. Oh, <laughs> everything's backwards. This is hard. Uh, it's not giving the most curve, but that's okay. Um, it will build up to that eventually and get kind of more organic. So I'm not gonna stress about the top, but I am making sure that where my little strip of paper end, I'm really like smoothing that down and making sure that it's sticking um, so that I'm not having things slide around. Sort of covering up more of these openings than I want to. So um, once I get this stuck down, I'm going to kind of just rip that down a little bit. Um, doesn't need to be perfect, but you will. Yeah, I'll get back to that. I'm going to go with this tall one here. I'm going to put a little piece down in there and kind of smooth it onto the edge um, and then bring it down to the outside. And this one is long enough. So I'm at the bottom now. Um, this one's long enough that I can kind of like also push it through the other end. It doesn't want to stick. OK, I'm actually going to rip it of my extra. Now I have this little tab and I'll just bring that down in there. And if it's not super wanting to stick, you can kind of just take a little bit of the paste and use that to smooth it down. There you go. So we're at the point in a paper mache project where it seems um impossible it seems like we just have all these random pieces of paper and they're not making a perfect shape um and this is the point that you have to push through um and you will build up to be a more organic shape in here so i just have to Really, I'm saying that for you, but I'm saying that for me. Um, <laughs> remind myself that uh, this one was once here, and it it was fine. It turned into a vase. So.
So uh, with this one, I really uh, looped. So I did the bottom last. Um, so I kept it open like this. And um, I was looping strips of paper down and through into the bottom and back up. If that makes sense. Um, to create this kind of like lip. Um, that is not going to be super easy with this one because I have these three openings. Um, so I think rather than try to go down through my sort of inner tubes, um, I'm going to focus more on just going across the top um, and leaving these openings. And um, we'll just see where we end up with that. But yeah, it's going to, I'm going to need like tweezers or something to bring them down in the middle. So I'm not going to do that. Okay. A little shoulder piece. If you'll notice, I'm going all the way to the bottom of the bowl um, as I'm kind of pinching the start of this strip. And um, that is because I wanna grab a little bit more of the flour mixture. This does tend to separate. So we have more, it's more watery on the top than it is in the bottom, if you can see that. So, um, and that also just kind of helps keep it a little better mixed. Um, and the reason I kind of use my two fingers to sort of gently squeegee uh, the extra off of the strips of paper is that um, this project is really hard if it's too goopy. Um, you start to get strips of paper that are sliding around on each other and um, it also takes forever to dry if you've built up too much moisture. So that's where you kind of risk that mold issue. Um, so yeah, if you're just like just using enough moisture to make the pieces of paper stick, but you're not um, overdoing it. So. So I've sort of covered up one of my openings a little bit. If you can see like that still goes. Um, so I'm just gonna mindfully uh, keep going. And if I kind of end up with two openings, that's fine too. So. Um, so I'm getting to the point here where it's like, it's pretty wet. Um, and I have kind of, yeah, I just have some extra moisture going on. So what you can do is just take a piece of paper that you haven't really dunked yet um, and just pack it right on there. And that will kind of help you soak up some of that extra and that layer and help you keep building up um, without risking just everything kind of sliding around. It's really important um, to sort of alternate the um, direction of your paper strips. So I'm kind of zigzagging back and forth. Um, I guess crisscrossing is a better word. Um, so that I'm not building up one spot more than another, but then I'm also using these layers to kind of like lock into each other. Um, and that just creates a lot more strength. So. 
because we have some uh, some bones in there, it's not as important to build up that strength um, because it'll, you know, it already stands up on its own, so that's fine. But uh, if you were using a base like a balloon um, that, you know, you then pop and it obviously disappears from uh, supporting the paper mache or um, if you were kind of building this onto a structure that you're then pulling it off of, like I've seen people build it onto a bowl um, that they want back. Uh, so yeah, that would be a situation where you'd like really, really want to focus on building up a good layer. But here we're just trying to get enough coverage and um, have everything look nice and organic. So we're just covering up the kind of uh, sharper edges of the form underneath to make it a little bit more round looking. So. So I've got some layers kind of, you can see kind of sticking up here. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it too much because I'll be crossing them again with another piece of paper. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, like, okay, I've gone this direction. What else do I wanna sort of pin down with another layer? Okay, now I'm having that moisture build up again, which is totally expected. I honestly don't think there's anything you can really do to prevent that, um, but you can solve it by, again, just putting down a fresh strip of paper on there and it just soaks it all up. So. As you can see, this one's soaking it up at the end, but then the middle is still pretty dry. So I'm just gonna dip in and use some of that paste to smooth this down.
feel like paper mache is very good for um, kind of working on your like, obviously working on your perfectionism, also kind of working on your, uh, I say your, for me to work on <laughs> my uh, self doubt and tendency to get frustrated if I'm not uh, succeeding right away. And it's just a good reminder that um, not everything is super serious. And uh, if my vase is goofy, <laughs> it's goofy. So, all right, I've been focusing so much on this, um, on this top and kind of sorting this out that um, I've been sort of neglecting the bottom. So I can just feel there's so much buildup up here, which is great, but there's not a lot sort of down at the bottom. Um, so before I get too uh, lopsided there, I want to just do some more buildup at the bottom. And the bottom's quite a bit easier. Um, so I'm not focusing on trying to like work around any kind of um, smaller details and just going in a circle. So Okay. And I'm very enthusiastic with the paper mache uh, liquid. So I'm just going to take this unused paper and smooth it down. And yeah, it's soaking up a lot of that. So I don't worry too much about um, kind of bumps in the paper, or everything not being perfectly smooth. Um, one, trying to practice mindfulness. Um, so it's good to just let stuff not be absolutely perfect. But two, if you get there and you really want it to be smooth, um, it is possible to very, very gently uh, with like a fine grain um, bit of sandpaper. Like you have to make sure it's totally dry. You've given it a couple days um, and you can go in and kind of sand it down. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't sand it a ton, but it's helpful if you want to kind of just take off some little bumps. Um, and if you're going to paint it or something, that makes it a little bit easier. All right, so I've built up a little bit more. Um, not totally even, the middle is a little bit indented, but um, I'm gonna be wrapping more around, so I'm not gonna super worry about that. Okay, so looking at my top, I'm kind of interested in like now that this is forming, I'm less enthusiastic about these other two openings. Um, that's just kind of I feel like, yeah, not as into it as I was when I started. So I'm gonna focus on this one. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do since this is still wet is I'm just gonna kind of open it up a little bit more. So I'm just like tearing down the paper. 
Okay. So I have a bunch of paper strips that are um, a little bit short. So that's fine. But what I'm going to do is focus on, like I did with this one, um, actually going down and through. So I'm going to show you one of those. All right. So I have that opening. And I'm going to take this strip of paper and just kind of let it go through. You can see that. Um, and then I'm going to start with the top and just fold it over, smooth it down. And then I'm going to grab that bottom strip and on the same side as the top, I'm just going to wrap it around. So you can see it's kind of going all the way down and through. All right, so that's my game plan for this opening. I'm kind of pulling that taut. Obviously the paper is pretty delicate when it's wet. So I'm not like really pulling. I'm just kind of, well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, pulled too much, it's fine. All right, so I'm just gonna smooth it down a little bit. And it's not, obviously it's not coming all the way out, but that's okay. That's part of the buildup is that we're not relying on one single piece of paper to completely uh, give the structure. All right, I'm sorry. Smooth that down, pull it, not too much, and up. There we go. Um, you can really like reach in there and make sure that's smoothed, uh, like the strip is smoothed down on the inside. Not a huge deal, but if it's super just floating around in there, um, obviously when you go to put like, flowers or something in there, it's not going to be um, as easy. You'll have something in the way. So about that. Going down and up. All right, so now I've done this kind of outer outer wall, um, but then I have this inside that uh, where I kind of open that up. Um, there's some shorter tabs, so I'm gonna work on the inside a little bit. But same method, we'll just kind of have more um, to wrap. So let it go down and through and then I'm going to give myself just a, like a bunch to wrap over the top and down and then take that bottom one pull it towards me and bring it to meet the other one so that is conveniently forming part of the bottom for us um, I wouldn't do the whole thing that way, obviously, but uh, that'll give us a little bit of a start. So, yeah. Right. So this one is a little too short, if you can see, to come all the way back uh, to the side. That's fine. Um, just break it off and smooth it down. And again, not a huge deal um, because we're focusing on paper buildup rather than like our one piece of paper uh, carrying this whole thing for us. Okay. 
So um, I've got these three going. I've got some on this side. I'm going to keep going with this method until I have kind of a full like array of paper strips going around. Um, and that way I know I've given myself some good overlapping coverage. One thing to be mindful of is that uh, because we've started adding some to the bottom, um, it might be a little more eager to stick to our newspaper that we've put down. Not going to be a huge issue as long as you're consistently kind of lifting it back up to work on it. Um, but if I just like stuck it down, never pulled it up again, um, I might have to kind of work to free it from the bottom paper. So. Um, because of the way you kind of need to construct this by turning it all different directions, um, that's not going to be a huge issue, but it is something to be aware of. All right, this guy's super lumpy, and I'm going to just let it be that way. So as we're like trying to round the sort of oval shape, um, the importance of thinner strips uh, becomes more apparent because we had a super, super wide strip of paper. Um, it's not going to want to curve and go all the way over our form. Um, so these are probably the widest I would want to go for rounding this kind of shape. Um, I could even cut these in half and make them thinner, but um, I don't want to. So. Okay, so I've gotten pretty good amount of paper strips wrapped all the way around this. Um, and now I'm feeling the sides, they're feeling um, pretty, pretty wet. So um, I'm going to focus on wrapping around now that I have all these strips coming down this way. Um, and that way I'm really like solidifying them. Um, so the first one, I'm just going to do dry and see how much of this it wants to soak up, which is a fair bit. Also going to focus on going over this side because um, as I'm feeling it, it's still pretty um, thin and delicate on the top, um, and that's from me being indecisive about how many <laughs> openings I wanted and kind of leaving that open. And now that I've decided uh, the way that I want to go, I'm going to work on covering that a little bit more.
I know a lot of you are artists and have done a lot of crafting. Um, so I don't know if this bothers you, but I am someone that has a really hard time with my hands being uh, dirty and messy, um, especially with flour and like that kind of buildup. Um, and I really look at paper mache as a good exercise to relinquish some of that control and to accept being a little bit messy, having my hands be a little goopy, and um, surviving that experience just fine. So it's a good kind of reminder to be patient and to let go a little bit. Okay, so we're getting a little bit, um, I'm gonna turn that around, okay. We're getting a little bit closer to this guy, um, which is nice, it feels good. We felt, or I felt like when we started, um, we we're really far away from this type of form. So yeah, it's just nice to see that progress, um, even over a short time. So I'm starting to get kind of a buildup of, of little tabs hanging out down on the bottom. Um, I am not going to worry about that right now because I'm focused on getting the top structure uh, sort of built and the bottom um, comes later. So even if it's kind of messy, um, We'll be covering that up anyway, so not a huge deal. So I like to kind of go in as um, I've built up a pretty thick kind of squishy layer of paper. Um, so it's a little bit more willing to kind of give and mush. Um, another paper mache technique is to actually make paper mache, uh, I don't know what you call it, like dough or, or like pulp um, and then build with it like clay. And so the way I kind of imagine what we're doing is we've done that in a bunch of layers, but now they're sort of joining together a little bit to become one structure. So um, I can kind of like push on it and round it a little bit, um, which is what I want at the top. I want it to be really organic looking. Um, and so I don't want a like defined edge where like the top goes into the bottom. I want it to be really round. Um, so I'm sort of going in and smoothing it down and I can even get a little bit of paste on my hands and use that to smooth it. Um, but as we get closer to being finished, that's when we need to start paying attention to the edges of the paper that are sticking up and try to sort of finalize as much of that as we can. So I have this right here, which is sort of hard to see, but it's, um, it's just some edges that are all kind of sitting right next to each other. So I'm just looking for stuff like that and thinking about like, what way can I make my paper go, like the next paper strip that I add on to cover that um, in a way that is very stable. So I think with these, because they're all kind of right at the top, I'm gonna bring something across this way. Um, and I'm gonna look for just kind of a thinner, piece of paper, so that's not too bad.
Okay. So I've got my kind of problem area up here. And I'm going to cross it and just bring that down really gently. And that, that strip was pretty long, so it takes me all the way to the back uh, where it crosses back here. So that's giving me a lot of stability and just kind of covering up all those sort of open spots. So um, I've got the same thing going on here where I have like edge, 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 and I want to sort of seal that off. So that's going to be a good length. Oh, okay. It tore, but that's fine. I'll just kind of overlap a little bit and follow my original path. There we go. Okay. So then that kind of leaves me with the tops of these two. To cover up. So I'm going to use the wider half of this strip. Um, start here. Just wrap it over. So it reminds me a little bit of um, of like sewing in that you are taking something that is flat and has defined edges, um, and then you're sort of trying to get it to fit um, an organic curved form. So there are lots of little tricks in your angle of application that can do that. Um, you can also you know, do something like ripping the paper part way and having it kind of curve um, and overlap. So now we've got like a V shape. Um, there's lots of stuff you can do, but um, it's not the end of the world if you've got some edges sticking up. So another technique to deal with those, especially if they're in a spot that is just really curved and it doesn't matter how much paper you put on it, you know, curve versus paper edge is just going to leave some sticking up. Um, you can go to sort of the bottom of your bowl, get a little bit of thicker paste, and just use it to really saturate that area um, and smooth some of those edges down. And you don't want to rely on that for everything, um, again, because we are trying to strike a balance between moisture and uh, dryness <laughs> uh, to make sure that everything is, is sticking and is solid, but that we're not going to end up with something that is just so saturated that it doesn't want to dry. Um, and then we're kind of, we end up with something that um, is gross. So keeping that in mind. But um, again, because I've been so focused on the top, it's wider than the bottom. Um, that's not a bad thing. You could, you could decide that you really want uh, the top to be really um, full and the bottom to kind of narrow in, totally fine. Uh, I like the balance of having it kind of the same width all the way down, so going to add a little bit more. So the nice thing about paper mache is that um, most of the time, it's just stuff you already have in your house, and um, it really doesn't take a lot of supplies. Like, if you notice, I only cut up one of the two newspapers, 
and I have so, so much paper left. Um, and I only used half a cup of flour and I have just tons. Like I, I haven't even used half of this. So um, it's also nice if you want to craft with somebody, um, you know, other than the, the inner uh, paper towel and toilet paper tubes, um, you could definitely share this kit between, you know, two or more people. Um, okay. All right, so I've built up around the bottom, built up the top. I've been working on these little edges. And then I'm looking back at this opening. And now that I've built up so much um, of the other parts of the space, I'm kind of looking at the opening and I'm thinking that it's looking a little, uh, looking a little slim. So <laughs> I want to add some more to it. So I'm going to take some more strips and just do what I did before, where I go down through the middle and then kind of wrap it around the edge. So the strip's pretty wide, so I'm going to use it on this flat or flatter edge. Um, so I'm not asking it to make such a dramatic curve because it won't. And then for this side, that is, is kind of a dramatic curve. Um, I'm going to cut a few really thin strips. So um, I have a dish towel that I'm going to use to, you know, dry off my hands enough that I feel OK touching these scissors. I'm not going to get them all gross. All right. So I'm just going to take these. And I'm going to fold them so it's less of a distance to cut. Take my scissors. And I'm just going to cut down the middle. Again, this is not perfect, but it's fine. So, OK, so I have some thinner strips now that I can use to build up that little area without causing more problems. So again, same exact method is going down, wrapping it around the outside, and then picking this up. Now, obviously, because these are thinner, um, they're covering less ground at a time. So it's going to take me a little bit longer to get the buildup that I want. But um, the paper is able to curve and sit the way that I need it to sit. So I think it's worth it. Okay. You can even just kind of like pinch that in place. All right. It's looking pretty good. I'm back to the very squishy uh, status. So I'm going to use a dry piece and wrap that around. It just helps soak up some extra moisture here. And as I'm putting this piece on, I'm, I'm not finding as much um, moisture as I thought I would. So I'm going to dip in here and just kind of add it back so that that really stays in place. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at with this. 
Um, I have a couple little pieces that I might. Okay, I take that back. I'm adding one more piece and then we're gonna call it good. It's also nice because after a certain point, you know, you've reached enough buildup that uh, you're fine to, to be done with it. Um, but if you want to keep going, um, as long as you're keeping, you know, mindful of the amount of moisture you have going on, you can just keep going. So it's really up to you how, how much time you want to spend on it. Um, what kind of form you're going for. If you're going for something really like sort of ceramic looking and it's like roundness and it's build up, um, you know, the more paper that you put on and the more you're focused on rounding it out, um, the more sort of ceramic-ish it's going to look. So. On the edge to kind of help seal that down. Okay. So there's a little guy. Um, because I have the other uh, rolls <laughs> still in here, um, it's giving this kind of like hump and then goes down and then is up to our opening and I, I actually really like that it's very different from this one which is just kind of a straight slope because there's nothing under here I just have the one roll in there um, and that I like it it was pretty difficult to um, construct initially because this roll had nothing to support it. So I like, I taped it to the side, but still kind of wanted to like roll back and forth. Um, so it took a lot of that wrapping technique to grab it into place. And then this, because this is just open space under here, this took quite a bit of buildup uh, to make it solid like that. So that's just something to know. Um, you know, the more you can have an existing form, the less time that it's gonna take. Um, okay, so because this is wet on the top, I need to let it dry before I want to do the bottom. Otherwise, I'm going to have to let it sit on the top. And one, it's going to want to stick to my paper. And two, the weight of it sitting upside down is just going to like smush this in. So um, I would recommend letting this sit for about a day. Um, you can let it sit for longer totally, but at least, you know, let's say overnight um, and then coming back to it and the bottom is super easy doing the bottom um, on this one took me like 10 minutes or something um, because you're just, you know, you're starting in the middle and you're just wrapping over and over and over until you're covering this whole area. Um, it's much easier if you're not trying to wrap like all the way from the bottom over this top form because this has taken us some time to um I don't want to say perfect but to to improve to get it to this nice shape and if I'm adding tabs on the top or trying to wrap all the way around I'm going to have all those edges that I have to deal with again not the end of the world but if you want to save yourself some time um, I would just start in the middle, go around, and then end up on the middle of the other side, and do that all the way around. And then when you're done with that, just like we did on the top, you're going to wrap around the body of it. Um, and I say that like around this way to lock in all those tabs that are coming up from the bottom um, so that we're just leaving ourselves with a really strong structure. Um, and then once you're done with the bottom, 
the top obviously will be dry, so you can just let it, just set it upside down and let the bottom dry overnight at least. Um, and then if you want to paint it, um, I would suggest letting the whole thing dry for like two days um, so that you're not risking sealing in some moisture with your paint um, and causing yourself uh, just a smelly, smelly mold base down the road. So yeah, I would just make sure it's super dry, especially right now when it's so humid out. Um, when I went to paint this one, I, um, let it dry for a couple days and then I hit it with a hair dryer before painting. Um, obviously I let it cool down before I painted it, but, um, just to really make sure it was dry. And, um, like I said, I painted it white initially. Kind of wish I'd kept it that way. It was a nice ceramic looking uh, finish for it. And then um, I was like, what if I played around with orange? And uh, it's fine. I don't, I don't, it's not my favorite, but um, the other option would be to finish it off with either colored paper or white paper. Um, and that way you don't have to paint it. Obviously, you're going to have to round this shape again. So um, just think about, you know, think about that. Think about the time that it adds. Um, but if you are finishing it with paper instead of paint, um, the entire thing stays compostable. So that is a nice thing um, that I think about a lot when I'm making crafts is like, you know, now I've made this thing and is it just going to sit or is it going to end up in a landfill? Um, so, yeah. Um, if you don't like it anymore, you can throw it in your compost. So um, that's what I'll be doing with my extra newspaper. Um, you know, you can also use it for like packing material if you're shipping something. So, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, I will bring this back up. All right. Thank you so much. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions about anything um, or you run into any issues. Um, I'm happy to and try my best to answer. So, all right. Thank you.